I'm Big Lou, Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And let me tell you what I already have done for you. Yesterday I cooked some ribs, probably the fastest I've ever cooked ribs. Uh, from the time I lit the charcoal to the time we sat down and ate, two hours. I lit the charcoal at a quarter to four. We were eating at a quarter to six, I promise you. Now, I did uh, marinate these things for about five or six hours, really not marinating, but what do you call it, dry brine or something. I put Worcestershire sauce on them, and I put bear's butt rub on them after removing the membrane. Uh, now, this cook was inspired by a cook by Cowboy Kent Rollins. If you don't know who Cowboy Kent Rollins is and you're watching my channel, you'll probably love Cowboy Kent Rollins. Most people know who he is, uh, big star on YouTube, and he cooked some um, ribs in a Dutch oven in about two hours and then tightened them up on the grill. His were falling off the bone. Now, I didn't follow his recipe. His recipe's not like his. He used store-bought chicken broth. I used homemade pork stock. He used his own brand of seasoning. I think I mentioned it. I used a uh, bear's butt rub on mine instead. And um, he uh, did not put coals under his Dutch oven for cooking. I thought he did, because the video kind of looks like that, but read the fine print, all right? I put coals under my Dutch oven and I cooked mine too fast. They cooked in about 45 minutes in the Dutch oven. And then we went in about another 15, 20 minutes on the grill. Um, and I glazed mine with some orange jelly. It's actually some Satsuma jelly that I'd made a while back. And the, I made seven batches. And the first batch, I didn't do too well. It kind of just didn't set, and didn't gel. So I had to put more sure gel in the other batches. Um, and it made pretty good jelly. But uh, that first batch, I'd just been using it for a glaze on stuff. And I made some chicken with it a while back. Said I was going to make some ribs. So I did some ribs. Now, these aren't barbecue ribs, but then again, they don't taste quite like boiled ribs or oven baked ribs either. They were really, really good. So, um, like I said, I'm using Rollins's technique. I didn't follow it exactly, but it's similar to his technique, inspired by his technique and, uh, inspired by his recipe, but it's not his recipe. So watch his video. I'll have a link to it down in the description box. All right, let's get the grill thrill on. Dump out the chimney of coals on the bottom of the Weber, and I'm going to spread them out with a fireplace shovel. All right, I use this fireplace, old fireplace shovel for grilling all the time. And now what I throw down there is a Dutch oven trivet. Dutch oven trivets will keep your Dutch oven off the level of the coals. The Dutch oven I'm using, it doesn't have legs on it. And by using this Dutch oven trivet, I can put it right there on top of the... Uh, charcoal grate and the Weber, and I actually use my Weber as a Dutch oven table. Kind of has a built-in wind block as well, too. All right, so I put the meat, uh, the ribs with meat side facing in toward the Dutch oven, the bone side facing the edge of the Dutch oven. And I put the uh, cut bone side down so that when you get the pullback from the meat, the, uh, you know, the bones stick out about half an inch or so. Kind of keeps the meat off the level of the liquid. Now, the liquid I'm using is some pork stock. Now, you see it's been refrigerated. That's what that stuff floating on top is, is that fat. I made that pork stock from some uh, picnic shoulder bones. All right. Now, what I'm throwing in is um, a whole onion that I've quartered. I'm throwing in a few bay leaves. I'm throwing in a sprig of rosemary from my wife's fresh rosemary plant and about four cloves of garlic that I kind of mashed up, chopped up a little bit. I'm just, and some liquid smoke right there in the bottom of that liquid. And then I'm gonna cover it up and put the coals on it. And I'll show you what it looks like after these coals all get on there. All right, what I did was I used up that whole chimney now, I realize the Dutch oven's not quite centered in, in the middle, but that, I guess that's going to be okay. I uh, covered the top with coals. How many? I don't know. That many. And uh, the bottom, there's a layer on the bottom of coals. And then I've got this ring of coals around the outside of this uh, Weber kettle here. So that's how we're going to do the coals. All right. Well, um, I thought Rollins said in his video that uh, it took about two hours, but uh, maybe I had this too hot or whatever. But these things have gotten to the done point. Look at them right there. Here's a the thermometer. Stick that in. And as you can see, it's going way past 200 there. This one was at 190 a few minutes ago. So it's at uh, 189, 190. So these are done uh, in 45 minutes. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is reset here and um, get these coals. Straighten out here on the bottom, and we're gonna put these on the grill. I 
really need to have more, another chimney of coals, but I wasn't ready to do it yet. All right, this'll work. These things are done anyway. out of here whoa 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 look at that look at that get out the way They're tender, but they're not falling apart yet. Now what he did was he put them there for a while, then he'd flip them over, and he'd put them there, and then he'd flip them over. We'll see what happens. Okay, these have been running about three minutes. And uh, I'm gonna flip them over to the other side, right here. I just about put my coals out. You see, they're falling apart. Come here. Come here to me. So they're not going to win a barbecue competition, but they may be good ribs. We'll find out. Hope they're breaking apart there. Lay over like that. And we're going to go uh, three or four minutes on this side. We're going to flip up, glaze them and flip them again. All right. Then about another three minutes on that side. Now look, I think they're looking pretty good. We're gonna flip them and glaze them. All right, flip that side. Yeah, they're developing a uh, nice little bark. You probably can't see too well. It's beginning to get dark. And what I'm gonna do now, this is that Satsuma jelly that I used on some chicken. If you saw that video, I'll leave a link to that video down at the bottom. Um, it's an orange jelly. You could use an orange marmalade, maybe an orange liqueur if you wanted to. I don't know, it was good on chicken. I don't know if it'll be good on uh, these ribs, but we're gonna find out. Excuse me, smoke's getting in my eyes. more of that jelly on there. Make these things sweet now, because that rub is not too sweet. All right. Uh, let's do it again. All right, here we go. Another few minutes with that, and we're gonna do the other side, the meat side. See what they look like. Uh, they don't look like completely like barbecue ribs, but I think they're going to be pretty good. All right, I'm going to probably glaze them one more time with the orange uh, glaze before I wrap them up in foil. But we'll meet back when uh, they've rested 10 or 20 minutes and we're cutting them. But uh, yeah, I'm going to coat them one more time before I put the foil on. But they're not going back on the grill. All right, so I had a little strip on one thing. I aluminum foil that ran out and I used it and then did it like this. All right, they certainly don't look like barbecued ribs, but they've been grilled and tightened up a little bit on the grill. Let's find out what they taste like. There's one slab. They're still pretty warm. There's another slab. I want to tell you that one of these, um, probably this one, was probably the hardest slab of ribs I've ever had to remove a membrane from. And the other slab was the easiest. It came off in one piece and the other one, I'm, 
fooled with. I think it might have been this one that the membrane was still on, but you can't tell it. All right, let's cut these up and see what they taste like. And I've got um, my daughter Hannah. Oh, they're just sliding through there real easy. Okay, I'll just cut, cut one right in the center there. See, there's no smoke ring because they were done in the Dutch oven. Uh, but that pork stock was done with smoked picnic shoulder bones from a picnic shoulder. So they may have a smoke flavor. I threw a little liquid smoke in it too. So it's not designed to have a smoke ring. And uh, let's see what Hannah thinks of it. They smell good. They smell good? Mm -hmm. See what Eli thinks of it? They look like, you know, pork chop meat right there. And uh, I'm going to... Turn around and taste this end piece right here, and I'm gonna taste the middle one too. So we'll, we can see. All right, kids, what do they say? What do they taste like? Pork delicious. Chops. They're delicious? They're what do you good. They taste like pork chops a little bit, but like sweet. All right, my daughter says they taste like sweet pork chops. What do you think they taste like? Just, I don't know. Just they're delicious? So good. But they're so good, but they're not like bar barbecued ribs. Uh uh. No, All right. Like ribs, but my daughter says they taste a little bit like pork chops. My son said they don't taste like pork chops. He doesn't know what they taste like. They don't taste like the barbecue ribs, but they're delicious, whatever they taste like. Um, try this end piece. I always like the end piece on ribs anyway. Oh, that's tender. That's tender. Now, don't completely fall off the bone, but you don't have to pull a lot. Mm -mm. That orange glaze is good. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to try this one. I'm going to kind of center cut that. little pullback you don't have to know them mm -mm. The orange glaze is good y'all all right I'll do this again I was a little surprised they don't taste like those mushy um, boiled oven baked ribs that um, I remember as a kid that my friend's mom used to make and they taste much better than that all right they don't taste like stew meat either all right they're all really good so is it as good as my barbecue ribs? I don't know. But, heck, I got it done in less than two hours. From the time I lit the chimney to the time I'm taking this test, taste test. It's right now quarter to six. All right? And I'm eating. It's worth it for that amount of time. Big Lou Barbecue.